Hi all, I have a great game for Nimzo Indian fans from the British Chess Championship. Jonathan Hawkins was playing against John Ems, so battle of two grandmasters here. John Ems is an author of uh, books, many books, including uh, Nimzo Indian. So it's interesting that um, actually he plays one of his own recommendations here. D4, Knight F6. We see uh, a Nimzo Indian. White doesn't avoid it with Queen's Indian territory. And Queen C2 now. This is one of Kasparov's favorite moves. Queen C2. Black castles. After Knight F3, D6. A3. Black volunteers uh, the bishop. So no structural damage. Just uh, an emphasis on light square control with this only. So B6. So seems a, just very polite light square control at the moment g3 bishop b7 bishop g2 so very positional opening is it a concession that black has given up the dark square bishop in this particular situation is in this particular pawn structure we see a5 here and there's almost a positional threat of a4 here with uh marking out this light square and in fact, even when John Ems is not playing the Nimzo Indian, even in one of, one of the Queen's game accepted games of an earlier round, there seems to be a very, very super aggressive, I would say, light square strategy as the undertone. And you see that here, that actually there is an aggressive light square strategy being pursued here by Black. In fact, after Bishop E4, this Bishop is prepared to be... Uh, taken off the board but soon bishop b2 queen b8 bishop h3 c6 so with d5 there's going to be more pressure put on light squares but white is in the process of trying to grab this bishop to get the bishop pair and in fact black just accepts that he doesn't make any provision against f3 to example to put the bishop here i think if he did it might be more risky than what he actually played if he plays h6 yeah this this technically is actually quite good for white this position uh maybe even white is looking forward to e5 and trying to open up things black really wants to keep a clamp an aggressive clamp on the light squares as, as well as general you know light square domination he plays d5 this starts to put a clamp a bind on the light squares but it does sacrifice basically the light square bishop so you might think might not think this is the most spectacular game of chess in history but it is kind of dramatic in its own right that black is content with the knight pair here it's a classic nimzo indian defense being played by a classic Nim classic author uh and an uh, uh, of of great chess books including Nimzo Indian defense so the theoretician is the practitioner here practicing what he preaches he's locking down these light squares and in fact after rook fe1 b5 we see this pawn actually being uh, targeted now potentially to undermine the structure and lock in this bishop one benefit of a light square hold here is this bishop's locked in to that d4 pawn so can you argue that white bishop here, pair here isn't that great and this is also granite so this bishop this bishop hasn't really got active lines we see e4 trying to open up the position b takes and now concrete is given to white knight b6 basically uh yeah a concrete wall here c takes d5 c takes keeping this bishop firmly locked in there's a certain elegance of play here rook c8 and the queen's there's queen side counterplay a little bit of queen side counterplay queen a7 bishop g5 rook c6 yeah black's gonna potentially double rooks rook ac1 that's taken off and after knight c4 uh white has an intention now of trying to go for winning a pawn there is a small downside though white has been playing quite a few pawn moves around his king there's a king safety difference emerging here and also there's an, another 
thing about this position if this pawn is locked down it could be a target as well for example a4 and rook b3 white forcefully takes now on f6 giving up the bishop pair in a quest to try and win a pawn now so this is putting a lot of pressure arguing that this is a tactical liability but look at the weak squares that have been created around white's king and if this bishop goes there's even more weak squares Will these actually be a big price to pay for trying to win a pawn here? Black actually is content with black trying to, with with losing a pawn after queen d7. He allows a little combination of bishop takes d5. It's essentially like a gambit position. The, the, the premise of the gambit here is to exploit this lucrative vacuum of weaknesses of the queen takes d5. Black, from an engine point of view, although a pawn down here, is technically better. There are numerous threats based on this vacuum of weaknesses in this position already. Uh, black is calling the shots. Rook b2 is threatened here to try and just checkmate. So that's addressed. That principal threat is addressed here. Uh, you know, if d5, then we have queen e3 check first. And this is just uh, winning for black. For example, check. Here, there's a nice tactic. Can you spot? These kind of tactics are throughout, sprinkled throughout this game based on this vacuum. There's an enormous tactic in this position which gives the flavor of things to come. Black to play, if I give you five seconds, what would you play here? Okay, queen c1. Yeah, nasty pin. Doesn't matter about the check. We're still in that nasty pin. It's just, it's totally winning. Uh, so that just shows that there are big dangers tactically in this position. So queen c3 addresses both the uh, rook b2 and queen e3. Queen d5 now introduces rook b3 uh, to try and pressurize a3. That's addressed. Queen e4. And we have some repetition. But now, a4, black is gradually trying to improve his position. And again, rook b3 may be uh, argued to be the principal threat. Rook e1, queen d5. And now rook b3 again, principal threat. Rook f1. Rook b3 is played. So white is protecting now his pawn. Queen e4. But now again, rook b2 is threatened. This vacuum is haunting white on every move d5 what well, has this token extra pawn but actually that's a short-term issue to address now it's attacked it's defended indirectly but now after rook d2 there's a threat of mate and black is in a position to toy with white like a cat playing with its prey uh, toying with white as if there's going to be a threefold repetition but no rook d3 now and White's in a kind of zugzwang here. John Ems is enjoying this game. He's enjoying torturing his opponent a pawn down here. This lovely vacuum of weaknesses. It's as if, yeah, White's really not going anywhere here. He's tied down in a passive position, a pawn up. Rook f2, king g7, mocking white's king safety, saying, I'm tucked up cozy in bed here with these three pawns, whilst your king has got this vacuum of weaknesses around it. You have to constantly defend against my nuisance threats of mate. So they need to be addressed. White's just having to passively play this position. Rook d5 now. There's a new agenda being set. Uh, let's see white can easily lose this if he plays queen c6 queen d4 check and rook takes d6 scoops up that pawn leaving white still with that vacuum and this other problem pawn on a3 so that's not particularly handy queen c6 uh, queen c7 actually is even worse after rook d2 white's actually getting mated uh, can't get much worse than that in a chess game usually uh, so yeah this is a difficult position after rook d5 queen c3 that pawn drops okay so equal on pawns now but it's just the vacuum difference 
black's king is tucked up in bed white's king has to be on constant paranoid lookout for being mated queen c6 now threatens things like queen d7 for rook to the seventh queen e4 actually black elects for check in this particular position queen c2 threatening potentially rook d3 try and win this pawn check and now a new kind of set of threats of invading along the first rank the king being pushed out of bed here check queen c4 with the threat of rook d3 rook d3 and there's just numerous threats here uh, the principal ones this is protecting the pawn but the principal one seems to be queen c1 basically to go maybe round over here uh, let's let's give an example let's let's say here or maybe even queen queen d5 for queen f3 yeah white has to be on high uh, lookout in fact this is similar to the game anyway i've just shown you so queen b4 instead of queen d5 queen c6 was chosen which may even be stronger actually rook e3 now a really great move here on move 59 which really uh, shows there's another asset to black's position it's not just a vacuum there's two things to make white juggle with can you see what black plays in this position very very instructive game i believe tactically positioning and about relative king vacuums so far a lot of instructive themes here black to play if i give you five seconds what would you play with black okay rook b3 very very nice move if takes then check and the pawn is dragged down to be a queen the pawn's going to be a queen here after king e3 pardon me eight takes there's no stopping this pawn okay and may maybe you might think this yeah it doesn't matter you can even just take that the checks are going to run out uh, so rook b3 yeah we have queen e7 queen h1 yeah the white king is even more unsafe than before and there's other liabilities in the position now h4 protecting that pawn rook b1 yeah it's not good when the heavy mob are on the first rank check check the heavy mob are coordinating now queen c2 threatening things like queen c1 and queen d1 principal threats queen c1 is played hitting the rook rook d3 and can you see the final move of the game crushing blow in this position one of many available actually but this will do black to play okay five seconds to pause the video hope you can spot it exploiting pins echoing like a pin we've seen in an earlier variation queen d2 nice cross pin aesthetic cross pin game ended here if king e4 we can just scoop up material yeah it's it's hopeless this pin is it's hopeless here so that was a game of endless torture relentless torture from the opponent being a pawn down it's just that vacuum and combined with this advanced pawn as well black giving up spectacularly both bishops to have this really aggressive lockdown on light squares which is m style with the black pieces such a super aggressive dark square strategy elegance and aggression modest aggression throughout the tournament so he's in a great position by this round i'm i'm a new fan i'm a really big fan i'm going to start to analyze his games in great detail his openings i love his light square strategy in this game maybe check out his nims of indian book i think he deserves some more book sales based on this epic win here in this british championship 2017 comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much